our black beans, a cheaper alternative to our soap company dye powder. Let's find out. Just to review, in this late summer going into fall, we've done green a couple of different ways. We've certainly done blue with our soap company dye powder, and we've also done purple, or at least tried to. And in the Pursuit of Purple episode, we learned that organic dyeing is often pH sensitive. And in the case of black bean dye, I kept that in mind and used distilled water to soak my black beans. You'll need one to two gallons of distilled water and one to two pounds of black beans. Most of the instructors have done one pound at a time, but I wanted concentrated dye. So I did two pounds and only used enough water to keep them covered. They should soak overnight and then you'll drain the liquid into your dye vat or blender. If you're using this dye to color paper pulp, you're going to have to drain it into a holding container because you're going to add this dye water to your paper pulp as you would normally when making paper pulp. I did not dye any commercial paper with this black bean dye, so let's hop up on the desk and see what happened with our paper pulp. Okay, so I did not pull very many sheets of this black bean dye pa um, paper, handmade paper, and uh, the reason is that my apartment has had all this organic brew with the cabbage and now the black bean, and my apartment smells a little odd, mostly just sort of planty. So uh, I used one sheet. I put down this stencil with graduated circles just to get... Um, you know, an embossed result. And I really didn't get that. What I got were these spots instead. What I think happened is this is, these darker spots are oxidization. Oh, it actually goes this way. But I can't be sure of that. And this, there was not full contact with this stencil. So I got a big blank spot. On the back, I want you to see that where the stencil was not, I still have random, um, spots and you'll see that again these sheets did not turn out all that well here's random spots i can only suggest that it's from oxidization i i really don't know why i got these random spots but it's kind of you know kind of interesting this is a pretty thin sheet and i want to compare that to what we got with our soap Here's, here's our soap dye for indigo. This is, you know, about midway through the um, sheets that we made. And, you know, it's mid-tone value. The black bean dye that we use to dye the paper pulp is in a very similar color tone. And is this an alternative for our powdered uh, soap dye? I don't know. We're going to do a little price comparison in a minute to show. I've put this against white paper so you can see better. What I want to show you next is the kitchen cloth that was already permeated with uh, cabbage dye, and I used it to line that sieve that I have that I told you about where I drain out um, dye from extra paper pulp, and it turned out brown. Um, this is where actually where I used it to... Uh, to drain out the dye from the black beans. So the black beans were sitting against this cloth and all the dye water passed through and the beans sat on top. It's very interesting. These colors here are from, you know, are from cabbage dyeing. So we've got a big mishmash and everything's going to have to go into the washer. What else have we done? Well, <clears throat> let's get our white paper again. This was a couple weeks ago now, before I started cabbage dyeing, I was trying to get a nice yellow with turmeric, and it works very well. But if you remember I, the episode that I did where I said, how did you get green out of that? 
This is a redo of that because in that instance, I was using shredded book pages as my paper pulp and it turned out green. And you can see this is a little bit green um, under certain lights. This is the redo where I shredded up plain paper and use turmeric as the dye. And it does work. It's beautiful, sort of lemony yellow in, you know, varying concentrations. It's one of the easiest dyes to um, use, but you have to use white paper. Anything with any ink on it, commercial ink, laser printer ink, any of that stuff is going to color it green. This was done with tap water both the initial experiment and this experiment. So is the alkalinity of my tap water affecting this or the alkalinity of my paper pulp? Probably. It would be worth doing. I'm not going to do it now, but it would be worth doing to redo this experiment with distilled water and an acid modifier if our dye is not uh, pH neutral. If our paper makes the dye in the paper pulp vat alkaline, then it would be worth doing to add an acid modifier, probably vinegar, just to bring it to pH neutral, which is 7. Another interesting thing that happened is that over time, this original test with the cabbage, the first one, the colors have shifted a little bit. For example, this and this were this color to the eye, this green. Now they've drifted, the color has drifted a little bit where we painted the cabbage dye onto this handmade paper and it's now blue. However, on commercial paper, we have blue. So this is the exact same cup of um, cabbage here and here. This one was modified, this one was modified, and the same thing here. This is plain, this is with a little bit of baking, no, this is with a little bit of baking soda, that's how we got green originally when we didn't want it, and this is with a little bit of vinegar, but not clearly not enough. We're still in the blue family. So I just wanted to make you aware that your color will continue to shift a little bit as time goes by, and so, without precise recipes or formulas, it's really kind of hit and miss what you're actually going to get. What's next? Well, that's a lot of Kool-Aid. It's all black cherry Kool-Aid because if you remember that I am in pursuit of purple, a specific shade, and we got really close with cabbage dyeing, but that whole cabbage dyeing thing is, is too iffy for me. So I wanted to try black cherry Kool-Aid. I can already tell you that most of the demonstrators use two packs of Kool-Aid and how much water they actually use to dilute this Kool-Aid is between one and three cups. Well, it gives a pink dye and depending on what you put in there the pink dye is somewhere in this range it can be a little darker it can be a little lighter but it's pink right you don't want pink i have too much pink already so let's make a super concentrated black cherry dye with no sugar, don't get the stuff that's pre-mixed and you just dump it in water. Get the old fashioned stuff that all it is is the flavoring and the coloring. No sugar, no artificial sweetener, none of that stuff. And we're gonna do this in tap water because I believe this dye is not pH reactive. So let's see what happens. There it is in the cup, 10 packs to two cups of water with a test strip. There it is in the pan, ready to have the paper in it. And there it is up on the right with all the paper in it that I could fit.
All right, so what happened? Well, all the stuff I just tossed on the desk is important. First and foremost, what is important? These. These gloves. You absolutely need gloves for Kool-Aid dye staining because you'll end up with red fingers. I only have one real stain, but it could have been so much worse. My hands are a little red. How much did I use for one dye session? Five times what the other creators I've seen use. So I used 10 packs or five to one ratio of Kool-Aid to water. All right, next thing. Look at this color. I mean, seriously, look at this color. This is deep, rich, dark red. And I only had these in the dye bath for about 10 or 15 minutes because I knew that it was rich enough with enough Kool-Aid and enough dye, in other words, to give me some really rich color. And I wanted to pull this out and get this done for you. So book pages, some really, really good saturation here. Look at this. This is where another page was on, or an envelope I think was on top of it. This is brittle and fragile around the edges, as you can see. Very dark, very deep saturation. It was very hard to get this stuff out of the pan. Again, up against an envelope. It was hard to get this stuff out of the pan because there's something sticky in here, something crystalline. And so this is the first one that stuck. I don't even care that it's stuck. Uh, we'll, we'll use this scrap in collaging. Again, more sticking, but I want you to pay attention to this. This is because there was a chemical reaction and this is like super crazy. I don't even know what to tell you here, except that there was a chemical reaction. Every time I put a piece of paper in so far, this is all commercial paper. Um, it would bubble. Here's a good example. All these dark spots, it was actually effervescent. It was bubbling like when you put vinegar into baking soda. Not quite as, you know, explosive, but more like gentle fizzing from soda water. And again, it was, this was only, it was only the Kool-Aid and tap water. Um, my good quality, my good quality um, copy paper didn't fare so well. I hope you can see this. This right here is where you can see a layer of paper. Um, the solution got in there and actually exploded and it separated commercial copy paper, which we've not seen happen at all. But it's also very fragile. I could not get this this is the lowest layer, and I could not get this off of the, ver the under two layers without ruining, you know, this. But again, this is collage fodder right here. Got about a half page. That's good. I, I, I'm afraid to even bend this, but we do have about a half page that's good. Same thing here, less than a half a page. But look at this crazy effect, all from this ever effervescent uh, action in the dye bath. And you can see where some of it soaked in even more. This is really cool texture, but very fragile paper. Uh, here's the lowest one of the commercial copy paper. And this is actually two pieces of paper uh, that were stacked on top of each other. I couldn't get them apart as I was putting them in the dye bath. Very cool abstract pattern. And I you could even... I think patch this with glue or cover it maybe with another piece or something, make something really cool out of it. And finally, cardstock, commercial cardstock. Again, you can see where the solution soaked in and exploded the paper. I hope, whoops, I hope you can see this right here where it actually exploded the paper. Very, very interesting. The back is very cool, very interesting. This 
right here. All this is raised and kind of grainy. So it's possible that some of my dye, all the all the dark brown or dark red splotches plus this, it's possible that there was un uh, dissolved material at the very bottom and ca and uh, caused all this. This is the very first thing I did, and this has got that same explosion effect right here and right here. But because it's handmade paper, I can squish it, and it's like a blister. That's what all of this, um, all of this stuff looks like is little little blisters. So. Um, the fir very first thing I did was stick a piece of handmade paper in the um, dye, the cup that I had the dye in and just dip it. And one side turned darker and the other side, I think because this was the side against the cup when I pulled it out and tried to, uh, you know, scrape the water off a little bit and hang it, this didn't saturate as much, but a really beautiful color. Now... What do we learn from this? Chemistry is once again involved, and I don't know what the, oh, maybe I do. Here we go. Here's, here's the reason why. Citric acid hitting water that was being alkalized by the paper caused that fizzing. And let's see, is there anything else in here? Calcium phosphate, that's, a, that's an alkali. Um, but we've got citric acid and we have ascorbic acid, otherwise known as vitamin C, causing that fizzing reaction. 10 packets to two and a half cups. When I pulled out, you saw in the shot, or you will see in the shot, I only lost a half cup to dye all of this. Um, one thing I would say is really necessary. Where's that? Where's my... One thing I would say is necessary going forward is for at least this concentration, you need to use a silicone. If I am at the dollar store, you need a silicone mat lining your pan so that the paper will not stick and be destroyed like a couple of our pretty fragile single sheets were. You can see these stuck, um, and I couldn't get them apart. So I'm going to say silicone mat for sure for this concentration. Pretty cool and pretty dramatic. Now let's do our cost comparisons. Two pounds of black beans at $3.98, distilled water at $4.05 for three gallons, a half a cup of 91% alcohol at a dollar roughly as a preservative, and the total is $9.03 versus Nature Soap Indigo Dye at $7.20 per ounce plus shipping equals approximately $9. We use two teaspoons and it cost us about $2.45. I'm going to say that Nature Soap Indigo Dye is very competitive and I got a lot of paper out of it. Plus, we did not have to worry about organic chemistry dyeing, no baking soda, no vinegar, no none of that stuff. We got the color we expected. This next one's a little harder. Our black cherry Kool-Aid was $3 for 10 packages. We used tap water at zero cost. So our total cost was $3, and I have two cups of that left over that I can either extend by dilution or I can dye another half dozen pages or so in one sitting. What makes this a little tougher comparing a commercial soap dye is that I have not used any red from this company. So I can't tell you if the red that I chose will give you the same results. I kind of think not. I think it's going to be a redder sort of orange-ish tone as opposed to a little bit bluish tone 
giving us a cooler red. That being said, I picked Nurture Soap Really Red dye or pigment. I did not use a mica. And there's a whole discussion about that we're not going to take time for here. But keep your ears open. I will talk about micas in the future. So once again, you can see that the commercial soap dyes are very competitive and will give you a consistent color every time. You might have to play around with how much of that one ounce jar you add. In the case of blue, it was two teaspoons. In the case of this red, I would start with three teaspoons, but it probably isn't going to be as rich red as we got with Kool-Aid. And out of these three dye experiments we did, turmeric for yellow is probably the best news and it's the cheapest, but it does stain everything that it touches. So two teaspoons for the whole pulp dyeing vat, and that actually might be too bright. I'd start with one teaspoon, and if I felt like I needed more, I'd add another maybe quarter or half and work my way up to two teaspoons. Keeping in mind that I did not dye any commercial paper with black bean, and I did not dye any commercial paper with turmeric yet, where did we get the biggest bang for our buck? Well, the black bean compares favorably to Nurture Soap Indigo Dye. The Kool-Aid, we can't really compare it to any commercial dye yet, but we also have not yet made paper pulp and handmade paper out of that paper pulp yet. So what's the clear winner? If I'm honest, I have to say it's turmeric. I buy it by the pound. I can't give you a cost breakdown per pound because I don't have a full pound to measure it against. However, it does not compare with blue-green from spirulina. Spirulina powder at $1.50 a pound is the best value for your money or the biggest bang for your buck. You can toss teaspoon after teaspoon into your dye vat and get it as dark and rich as you would like. So to date, these are the dyeing techniques we've tried. First, paper pulp. We used turmeric and it gave us yellow. Spirulina, a blue-green. Red cabbage gave us purple, blue, and green. Black beans gave us dusty blue-gray, indigo soap dye gave us dusty blue, and black cherry Kool-Aid at super concentration gave us a deep, rich red. In our commercial paper dyeing, when we did food coloring, any color you can mix with off-the-shelf food colors, you will have to super saturate them. Our faux alcohol inks with children's markers, any color you can mix, although you will have to buy multiple packs of primary colors in order to get secondary and tertiary colors. Our red cabbage gave us purple, blue, and green, but that depended on pH, and there's a little more involved with that. Our black cherry Kool-Aid gave us a deep, rich red. However, we do need a silicone mat or a Teflon craft mat underneath the bottom paper next to the tray for them not to stick. We've done a lot of dyeing of paper this summer, plus the episode we did a couple years ago called just paper dyeing and that was all you know commercial paper it wasn't handmade paper so there's plenty for you to explore and plenty for you to do for myself I'm going back to making things because we haven't made anything in five or six weeks since Junk Journal July. So thank you for joining me. YouTube wants me to ask you to subscribe and like and share and do all the things. So there you have it. God bless you. I'll see you real soon.